Over a decade ago, when the human genome was first mapped by the ENCODE consortium, it was revealed that barely 2% actually coded for our 21,500 or so genes. And for want of a better term, the remaining 98% was labeled as junk DNA. Of course, some of this remainder was subsequently identified as having been once functional, but now redundant. While a full 8% was accounted for by ERVs, that major embarrassment for creationists. Furthermore, in 2007, ENCODE went on to discover that of this so-called junk, a further 9% of the genome was actually transcribed. So that still left approximately 80% of DNA with no apparent explanation. How did creationists greet that news at the time? Well, of course, to them, it was proof that evolution was invalid, but they never said how. And that design was true, but they never said how. Now, more recently, the ENCODE consortium has announced that much of what was deemed as junk does have or has had a use, and the unaccounted figure is now just 20%. So how do creationists greet this particular update to the ongoing project? That's right. To them, it is proof that evolution is invalid, but they don't say how, and that design is true, but they don't say how. Spot the problem with the creationist approach? Yes. Regardless of what the consensus is by real scientists, they will just enter into denial without offering any reasoning for their denial. They merely repeat the same mantra, regardless of what has actually been discovered. This is no better demonstrated by long-term anti-science armchair pundit Carl Gallops and his team of scientific illiterates at the P.P. Simmons channel. Let's have a peek from a recent P.P. Simmons video on this matter. Both the evolutionist and creationist communities are abuzz with the latest results from 30 simultaneously published high-profile research papers. So, Carl, why are creationists abuzz? with 30 simultaneous papers, when none of them have been involved, and of course, never will be involved. Proclaiming that the human genome is irreducibly complex and intelligently designed. What a massive lie that is. Not one single one of those papers would have deduced that the genome is irreducibly complex or proof of design. In fact, that weak argument would have been marginally more valid when the figure for junk DNA was 98%. And what about the remaining 20% of the genome? Is it functional also? According to Ewan Burney, ENCODE's lead analysis coordinator, it's probably not meaningless junk either, he said. Burney said in an interview, quote, it's likely that 80% will go to 100%. And we don't really have any large chunks of redundant DNA. This metaphor of junk DNA isn't that useful anymore. Bernie went on to say, no matter how you cut it, we've got to get used to the fact that there's a lot more going on with the genome than we knew. Of course there is a lot more going on than we knew. That's what science does. It never rests on its laurels with the job incomplete. All branches of science take an evolutionary path by building on the knowledge of those who have gone before. What is Carl Gallup's expecting? To map the genome for the very first time and have all the answers? Sorry, Carl, but science doesn't work like religion, as it never stops searching for the truth. While these startling comments about the newly discovered wonders of the human genome did not come from the mouths of creationists, they clearly demonstrate that we really are fearfully and wonderfully made by our Creator God, who made us in his image. Made in his image? So your God has genitals and also DNA? I'd like to see the evidence for that little gem. Yet another scientific devastating blow to the magical fairy tale of evolution. So Carl, why don't you tell us how, when junk DNA was approximately 98%, that it was proof of design, and now that it is more akin to just 20%, that it is still proof of design. I won't hold my breath for an answer, because you're not a scientist. You're just a mere pastor. Oh, by the way, Carl, if you genuinely, albeit foolishly, think that these findings support design, 
or falsify evolution, then how come these so-called secular scientists have gone public with such findings? Bang goes any theory of a cover-up or conspiracy by the scientific establishment. So, what we have here is yet another video by Carl Gallup's that makes baseless claims with absolutely no explanation for those claims. And of course, yet again, comment censorship is the order of the day. Now, while I, like many others, can't comment due to having been blocked for previously rigorously but politely debunking him, we can still look at a typical exchange you can expect from the P.P. Simmons team. Here is a common exchange with YouTuber Mark Meh13. I hope I've got the uh, pronunciation right there, Mark. So, here's that exchange. No, that does not demonstrate that they are made by a creator. This demonstrates that scientists are following the scientific method. Scientists discovered there is more to the genome than they once thought. Unlike Christianity, which is said in its strict ways, science constantly evolves and strives to understand that which is not understood. And here's P.P. Simmons' reply with, notice the mock hurt. My, my, thank you for your post. You have just demonstrated what we all knew about Evo heads. Wow. Mark then responds, that post doesn't actually say anything. I'm not going to put words in your mouth. So would you like to try again with substance? And P.P. Simmons <laughs> retorts with this little gem. Nope, you said it all. It is clear for those who know the truth of real science and the truth of evolution proposition. Thanks for the post. It will be your last one here. I have checked with Mark May 13 and he was indeed blocked. Blocked just for making an extremely valid point that the P.P. Simmons mob simply cannot respond to. Of course, we can also, also notice uh, underneath a typical comment from our old friend Buffy Boy Nick. He makes this great groundbreaking statement that really has us all floored. Epic evil toward moron, he says. Evolution is not science and never has been. So there you have it. What a powerful argument that is from Buffy Boy Nick. Oh, and as a cover for their cowardly dishonesty, they sent Mark a PM after he had been blocked, stating that he'd been blocked for being an atheist troll. All proof beyond all doubt that the P.P. Simmons team and Carl Gallups are fully aware that they are lying and misrepresenting real science. I ask you, how do these liars for Jesus sleep at night? And don't forget, Pastor Carl Gallups, I want to know why 98% 80% and 20% of unexplained DNA has each in turn been evidence for design. And above all, why?